Good morning, all of you. I hope I'm audible clearly. Great. Hello. So, um, Pele, let's look at the questions which we did yesterday. We were yet to discuss a few of them. So I'll just quickly open those questions as well. Okay. So yeah, so we had to discuss a large insurance company which has been selling various personal line products for many years is now considering selling travel insurance. So this question made three parts. Tha. The first one was whether uh, what if the insurance company sells the product direct directly. Second tha, what if it sells through travel agents? And the third one was through uh, an airline. So Hari ka ham loko, uh, first two ka advantage, disadvantage and third wale ka impact. Impact is again uh, somewhat advantages, disadvantages, this wording thoda change kare ke likhna ho chai. So uh, what do you all think? Kya points lik sakte hain hum log yaan sa hai? Others? Direct selling me. First cutting as commission may not be paid, paid to agents. Employ salespeople and pay salaries to them. Salary not linked to policy sales. Can control miss selling but reduce sales volume. Okay, yes. Travel agents may take commission, may sell product with highest commission without understanding needs of customer. Yes. High sales volume, but leads to dissatisfied customer. Direct selling, direct control, offer travel insurance to existing customers. If the company selling personal lines, it must have with pool of existing customers. Okay. Company may not have enough data willing to buy travel insurance. Current sales teams may not be experienced enough. Impact on lax experience. Uh, can you expand impact on lax experience? Yes, you go. Direct selling thing. Help with marketing and building brands and target existing customers. Anyone else? Any points? Acha, niche or a Uh, they are new to this product, so may face heavy initial R and D. May not have expertise. Okay, may have limited market data. Can be sold to larger customer base. Acha, this is for travel agents. Okay, travel agents selling it. Sold to larger base can directly compete with established market players. They have to pay some part of commission, travel agent. 
uh, direct competition with existing player may not be beneficial and harder to stand out for the company. Okay, okay, Ritam, no problem. Uh, benefiting from economies of scale because they will already have sales channels established for other products, right? What else? Control over sales processes, tickets and uncertain. Mm -hmm. Any other point anyone can think of apart from the already discussed? I think Kafi, a uh, decent number of points we have discussed. I am just waiting for Ritim to, whenever he is able to, talk about the lab's experience. Up to, let's see what they have written. Insurer retains control, lower initial cost. Using current sales channels, staff and systems already in place. Or, is kind of flip side will be that we need new staff and new systems. We need to have them. Disadvantage is given that long term costs may be higher. Example, errors may be made in pricing. This point we have not covered, but I think by uh, using R and D one of points and everything, it's more or less. Compensating the so new travel agents existing distribution channels to maximize business volume. Travel agents got expertise. Uh, expertise, I don't think anyone has mentioned. The travel agent already has a lot of expertise in the travel, um, <clears throat> travel domain. Additional costs and cost done. Cultural differences could lead to reputational risk. Example in relation to selling practices. So this one also someone had uh, spoken about how they would be wanting to sell highest commission products. So they have linked this to their reputation. What about the second part? If we sell airline, we to sell it. Okay, Ritam, no Hmm. Right. So, lapse for chances. Travel insurance is usually for travel only. So, lapse may not be that. Bolo, show the airline. Direct links to potential customers not using existing channels may lead to higher net cost. The advantage is Point is valid, but this advantage is not Any claim due to this airline will lead to large outgo. The concentration risk, right? They may not have experience. Of selling this type of insurance product to sales might be low. Correct. Other? Or going to be a part. Individuals may not compare against other policies as they may just end up buying it from the travel agents. Okay, yes, this can be an advantage, definitely. Yes, it's sir. Uh, this question talks about uh, the impact on business models specifically. So, mm -hmm. in under that respect, is the Niharika's point valid? Yes. So, what is so, business model here? Because otherwise, it is same as the first question, right? Right. It so is not the same as the hmm. first question because first question we are focusing on direct selling, 
and uh, travel agents. This time we are focusing on selling through airlines. So as I said, it includes advantages and disadvantages and anything to beach my life like this. Like general points as well will be included in this answer. <clears throat> The impact, you can uh, think of this like an opportunity cost impact on the uh, insurance company. Because had they not gone through the airline, so it, because they're going through the airline, the travelers of that particular airline or the customers of that particular airline will be buying insurance from them. Right? But if they don't go the airline, ke so ho hai, that they would have had more options and accordingly they would have tried to match the uh, or tried to compare the policies. Or point to look selling through airline. No, no. This is your impact to the advantage, disadvantage, nothing. Okay. Let's see. Most policies will be single trip policies as opposed to annual policies. Insurer may obtain a high volume of low premium business, which will need to reflect in uh, pricing assumptions, but a large pool of data will emerge. Be able to charge higher premiums because policyholders won't be comparing different products, hence profit may increase. So, uh, so this is one way how you can tweak this point as well. So instead of the opportunity cost aspect, you can make it a pricing factor as well. Attract a different mix of risks and premiums needs to reflect this. So, uh, here, different mix of risks you have to go I see that even though they have the experience in selling travel insurance, selling to airlines promises certain amount of sales and the number of tickets bought is known. Okay, as they do not have experience in selling. So, uh, I think at this point you can, right? But use the word may, which may. Because usually uh, all airlines, when they sell insurance, they may have to make it optional. They don't sell it as a compulsory add-on. It's an add-on. So it's basically optional for the customer. So this cube may write that airlines might be giving a minimum guarantee, a yeah, minimum number of uh, policies sold ka guarantee, just to them, it might be better. But ये जरूरी नहीं है कि जितना भी टिकट चाहेगा सब में चार्जिंग शार्ट के साथ में आधे डॉक्टर। Okay? Yes. Uh, anyone? Why will the uh, insurance company be attracting a different mix of risks if it sells through the airline? So normal travel will also include other type of travel, but this will only be including the air travel, right? So that will be the different type of uh, risk which will be onboarded by the company. Because otherwise okay. the train travel, bus travel will also have been insured. In this case, only air travel will be. Okay. So what you have said is a very good point, but um, they are restricting themselves to airlines. Yes, that's why I'm saying that airline will only ensure okay, travel so you through. Mean that ideally, there hmm. variety of risks. Hota. Now the mix of risks is hmm. very limited. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Niyarika, is it no time to underwrite the policies? Okay. This can be 
part of the answer, but not exactly the reason for myths of risk. But I think you can write it as a sub part that we will not be able to classify the risk into cohorts or something because underwriting ka time nahi milega. Yeah, underwriting hoi nahi paega for that matter. So naturally, underwriting ki upar bhi all you will have to write. Let's see what else. Uh, able to exploit opportunities for cross-selling. Cross-selling kaise ho gaya hap se? At the same time, I would say that this could be a disadvantage also. Before personal line plus travel insurance. Thick end. What is cross selling and how is this going to affect this one? This particular thing. So, Jesse ki travel agent may be ye tha. Cross selling ka scope. Similarly, airline may be. You can't see the question. I will just. Stop presenting and represent. Just give me one minute. Is it okay now? So, बताओ इस चीज़ सेल थ्रू एलएन क्रॉस सेलिंग कैसे होगा जल्दी से दिस वन वेरी इजी होता क्या है क्रॉस सेलिंग Yes, Kushi. Cross selling can be uh, wherein it can done by various methods. Maybe we can cross sell large policies and small policies where we are covering the fixed overheads from all our large policies by charging them higher premiums as compared to smaller policies where we cannot charge a very high premium due to competitive nature of the product. So we price that product accordingly wherein it will only cover variable or marginal expenses and all the fixed expenses overheads will be covered by larger policies. So this is a risk for the company because if the business mix is not appropriate and you sell more small policies as compared to large ones, then your fixed overheads won't be covered. And this can also happen within different classes. Suppose in this travel insurance business, uh, can be cross subsidized, subsidized with any other line of business wherein this is a new product being launched. If that is the case, then this can be launched only to cover the marginal expenses and all the fixed overheads will be covered by the old policies that are existing. Achoo. Your answer is completely fine. My answer me, you pointed out your mistake also. Three to cross subsidizing more. Na? Cross selling, uh, yes, Sarah. Uh, cross selling and cross subsidizing is not exactly the same thing. What Kushi said was a very good answer was cross subsidizing. Cross subsidizing में हम लोग cost को consider करते हैं कि कौन से cost को हम लोग कहाँ पे adjust कर रहे हैं, okay? Cross selling में we do not look at cost per se. Cross selling के through cross subsidizing हो सकता है. That is a possibility. But it does not mean that cross selling is cross subsidizing. Okay, cross selling is when you are just selling complementary products or when you are just selling. Uh, is my video visible to you? All? No. Hmm. 
तो क्रॉस सेलिंग होता है व्हेन यू आर जस्ट सेलिंग कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री प्रोडक्ट्स ठीक है कि व्हेन यू आर मैचिंग द प्रोडक्ट दैट इज क्रॉस सेलिंग अब इसके चक्कर में इफ यू आर बीइंग एबल टू सब्सिडाइज योर क्रॉस सब्सिडाइज योर कॉस्ट एज वेल दैट इज एन एडेड एडवांटेज विद क्रॉस सेलिंग का मेन मोटिव इज नॉट टू क्रॉस सब्सिडाइज इट इज इवर मार्केटिंग और इट कैन बी टू इंक्रीज सेल्स वॉल्यूम it is mainly a marketing technique theek okay? hai and cross subsidizing is uh, i would say more of a pricing technique which is also a part of marketing lekin ye zyada sales badhata hai and this one uh, cross subsidizing focuses more on the cost side of it i hope i'm able to explain the difference between the two ki jab aap cross sell kar rahe ho tab you are trying to जैसे एड ऑन्स होते हैं बेसिकली एज आई सेड कि आप कुछ भी एक चीज बेच रहे हो उसके साथ में यू कैन से देन व्हाई डोंट यू बाय दिस एज वेल सो यू आर बंडलिंग इट अप और यू आर जस्ट कॉम्प्लीमेंटिंग समथिंग विद इट सो दैट इज क्रॉस सेलिंग क्लियर तो यहाँ पे बिकॉज द एयरलाइन विल ऑलरेडी बी सेलिंग द टिकट सो दे केन दी इंश्योरेंस कंपनी विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लोय क्रॉस सेलिंग बिकॉज एयरलाइन जब टिकट बेच रहे हैं and insurance product or travel insurance product for their travel is like a complementary uh, thing so if you see that would be cross selling okay ha khushi so the concept of a product being a loss leader will that come under cross selling um it can it's not exactly cross selling but it can be an example of cross selling can be matlab you will have to explain it in a way that it becomes an example of cross selling okay thanks if the loss leader may be our aim is that we try to push the uh, less expensive or the cheaper product and then add the more expensive product right ki hum log attract karte hain एक चीप प्रोडक्ट से और फिर हम लोग एक और प्रोडक्ट को क्रॉस सेल कर देते हैं बट वहां पे क्या है वहां पे इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी दैट यू आर दैट दी अदर प्रोडक्ट विल बी अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री प्रोडक्ट दैट्स व्हाई दैट्स क्रॉस सब्सिडी नॉट क्रॉस सेलिंग राइट लॉस लीडर हां दैट्स व्हाई आई वाज एक्सप्लेनिंग कि लॉस लीडर इज क्रॉस सब्सिडाइजेशन इट इज इट इज 100% क्रॉस सब्सिडाइजेशन बट इट इट कैन बी क्रॉस सेलिंग इट मे नॉट बी क्रॉस सेलिंग अगर आप एक रिलेटेड प्रोडक्ट को साथ में टारगेट कर रहे हो देन इट इज क्रॉस सेलिंग बट इफ इट इज नॉट अ रिलेटेड प्रोडक्ट और इफ द टारगेट कस्टमर मे नॉट बी द सेम फॉर बोथ द प्रोडक्ट देन इट इज नॉट क्रॉस सेलिंग ठीक है ओके ओके और क्या है देर विल बी लोअर अंडर राइटिंग कॉस्ट Let less need for expensive advertising because in-flight announcements and magazines may be used instead. However, airline will charge a fee. Airline fees के बारे में भी कोई नहीं बोला. Policies for just one flight will pose no lapse risk, although renewal rates may be very low. So, तो यहाँ पे यह lapse का point has come in because now even though I don't agree with them exactly because travel insurance जो तो वो I think ideally is sold. इंडिविजुअल केस बेसिस पे बट मे बी होता आएगा कहीं पे सिस्टम ऑफ एनुअल ट्रेवल इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसीज एज वेल पब्ली देर मैट बी समिस्टम दैट्स वाई देव कम अप विद दिस पॉइंट कि पहला दोनों में इफ इट्स एन एनुअल पॉलिसी देन ऑफकोर्स एनुअल पॉलिसी में तो लैप्स हो ही सकते हैं बट उसमें भी जब लैप्स होगा तो एनुअल पॉलिसीज में भी लैप्स चांसेस बहुत लिमिटेड होते हैं बिकॉज एज यू ऑल्सो सेट इट्स अ सिंगल प्रीमियम थिंग और मे बी प्रॉब्ली द बिजनेस मॉडल दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इज कि आप एक पॉलिसी ले लो एंड एवरी टाइम यू ट्रेवल यू जस्ट पे अमियम देर यूर टेकिंग एन एनुअल थिंग तो मे बी यू विल गेट लेट से सब्सिडाइज डे दैट इज अ मॉडल आई कैन थिंक ऑफ जहाँ पे एनुअल पॉलिसी में भी लैप्स कैन कम इन कि हाफ द ईयर में ट्रेवल पे प्रीमियम पे किया बट रिमेनिंग हाफ में या सम पार्ट ऑफ द ईयर में on that travel they did not pay a premium so those 
particular clips were not covered okay that can be an example but again i don't think itna zyada dur tak dimag jaldi se jayega exam mein so focus more on the other points this is something agar yaad aa gaya agar aisa question aa gaya so you can just think on these lines and write policy uh, any regulation for policy sold on flight may impact required sales practices concentration risk may arise uh, this also someone spoke about more limited underwriting may mean extra risk margin more limited cover example and exclude dangerous pursuits single uh, simpler premium structure like a standard premium with simple adjustments for key rating factors such as destination age health so as we discussed underwriting nahi ho payega ye wala particular product mein ki sell through the airline so if there is no underwriting the only way of creating cohorts or the only way of differentiating for pricing purposes would be jo ticketing ki time hum log ke paas jitna information aata hai uske hisab se so that is basically the destination age health also uh, i don't know maybe like wheelchair or something they might consider but uh, destination age definitely for so sakta time of travel also you can add to this list the airline may default and withhold premium belonging to the insurer very important point that yahan pe if we are using any middleman so there is a credit risk introduced jisse ki ho sakta hai that we might not be able to recover the money policies may be sold either when the ticket is bought or on the flight itself there may be less risk of anti selection uh difficulties may arise in relation to quality of data collected so data will actually be affected because hum log ko data directly nahi we will be getting data from the airline and those of you who work i'm sure you know ki kahin aur se data aata hai to wo kaisa aata hai so probably the quality of data might not be very satisfactory okay any doubts in this question anyone चलो नेक्स्ट वाला देखते हैं सजेस्ट योर रीजन टाइप्स ऑफ इंश्योरेंस दैट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ अ कंट्री मे रिक्वायर इट्स सिटीजन टू होल्ड सो दिस वन इज अ वेरी जनरल क्वेश्चन दैट यू जस्ट हैव टू थिंक ऑफ डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट्स दैट कैन बी कंपलसरी एंड गिव अ रीजन की व्हाई गवर्नमेंट वुड वांट पीपल टू होल्ड सच इंश्योरेंस प्रोडक्ट income income protection when the government will have to support them social security costs okay critical illness government would support using public health care uh, but minimum uh, employers liability motor third party health insurance unemployment allowance ke liye unemployment okay um uh, private retirement pension schemes to lessen burden on state pension okay life insurance pension policy health insurance motor third party or bolo any other policies or any other products you can think of एक्सीडेंटल इंश्योरेंस क्या हुआ वॉट डू यू मीन बाई एक्सीडेंटल इंश्योरेंस तो वो तो इनकम प्रोटेक्शन ही हो गया ना
ओके लॉन्ग टर्म क्या है बिजनेस इंटरप्शन टर्म अश्योरेंस ठीक है प्रॉपर्टी डैमेज राइट लेती लोग क्या क्या दिए दे हैव स्पोकन अबाउट हेल्थ मेडिकल एंड डेंटल पेंशन सेविंग इमीडिएट एनविटीज ठीक है पेंशन के साथ में यू कैन मैंशन इमीडिएट एनविटीज इज वेल प्रोडक्ट लाइबिलिटी राइट इनकम प्रोटेक्शन लॉन्ग टर्म केयर टर्म अश्योरेंस एंडाउमेंट अश्योरेंस होल लाइफ फॉर फ्यूचर कॉस्ट एड करने का इतना ज्यादा वो नहीं है थर्ड पार्टी मोटर लाइबिलिटी रेसिडेंशियल बिल्डिंग एंड मूवेबल प्रॉपर्टी अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट एम्प्लॉयर्स लाइबिलिटी एम्प्लॉयर्स लाइबिलिटी नो वन हेज स्पोकन अबाउट पब्लिक लाइबिलिटी बात हुआ है एंड प्रोफेशनल इंडेमनिटी बेसिकली ये तीनों चीज काफी हैंड इन हैंड जाता है बिकॉज ऑल थ्री आर रिलेटेड वन इज फॉर एन एम्प्लॉयर वन इज फॉर अ मैन्युफैक्चर एंड द थर्ड वन इज फॉर अ प्रोफेशनल बेसिकली इट कवर्स ऑल थ्री ब्रॉड एरियाज ऑफ वर्क whether you are working as an employee or employer whether you are working as a manufacturer whether you are working as a professional so tino ways of work ke risk ko cover karne ke liye they will want uh, someone spoke about business interruption also that will also we can include that will be for any other kind of business basically uh, legal protection also can be a good option because costs are high for legal so see a legal protection and finally travel insurance travel insurance again uh, they have also written and may i would also suggest you can skip as well because travel insurance is not something the government will really need to promote as such kyunki utna zyada impact to the government nahi feel hota okay of course it's, it's uh, ideal that you should have travel insurance because you are losing out on money if you are not able to travel but uh, anyway i mean refund kaun sa milta hai mujhe is tarah to mil hi jate hai chale hi jate hai economy mein okay anything else anyone any doubt next question an individual has changed employer the new employer offers that employees a choice of pension agreement arrangements acha isme hum log ko baat karna tha defined benefit and defined contribution mein se kis mein jaye so first of all again the answer mein you will have to begin with a brief uh, description of dcs and dba that what exactly happens so i think two two lines each is good enough उसके बाद age is close to retirement age then defined benefit because higher final salary less time for contribution to increase its defined contribution okay needs of the individual and level and form of benefits inflation protection formula for defined benefit is the benefit promise sufficient for needs okay 
स्पॉन्सर्स का फिनेंशियल हेल्थ विल बी एम्प्लॉयर डिफॉल्ट expectation regarding salary growth flexibility change in form and timing of benefits which is funds if uh, the fine contribution tcm regulation and legislation right uh defined benefit uh, contribution but high risk of insolvency benefits never paid or promised uh employer exposed to investment expense and taxes contribution by employee is well employee exposed to investment expense and taxes two option which is tax efficient low salary preferred defined benefit as in defined contribution contribution will be very less and hence less fund um this point i would say is like a two way thing you can add another line as well and just say but at the same time if the salary is low and the benefit in the dds uh, or the defined benefit scheme is highly dependent on the salary then again aage ja ke funds ko kam milega jo hum log ko pay out hoga individual circumstances needs and wants will affect decision reg can, can they change the benefit promises if dcs ability to make contributions is employee capable of paying the contribution if dcs expectation of uh, investment return right the coil investment risk ko tha rahe hum log uh, tax treatment consider risk appetite that and ill health benefits provided tax advantages discretionary benefits employee contribution accrual rate how it is linked to salary whether increase in pension covers inflation uh, right jo bhi terms hai एक्सपेक्टेड इन्फ्लेशन को कवर कर पा रहे कि नहीं डिसकंटिन्यूसॉल गुड पॉइंट इनकेस सॉल्वेंसी ट्रिगर होता है तो क्या होगा लेटर ऑन किन बी ट्रांसफर कंसिडर ऑन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड एम्प्लॉयर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन एम्प्लॉयर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन मोर और लेस दैम इंडिविजुअल टेक्स ऑन द रिस्क ऑफ लॉन्जिविटी एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट Okay, so that point is there. Okay. Anything else, anyone? Big yeah. name. So defined benefit, defined contribution. Ka definition ho gaya hai. For uh, DB scheme, the individual will need to know full details of benefit, how it is linked to salary, period of employment, increase in some line and some form of inflation. This that there might be insufficient funds available to provide this promise benefit, an individual may wish to investigate this. For example, insufficient funds set aside the underfunding, insolvency of sponsor, holding of investments which are not matched to liabilities. So all points are now covered. If scheme belongs to a protection fund, the individual may receive benefits even in the above circumstances. However, there is a risk that the benefits will now be much lower than those promised. तो बहुत बार होता है कि जब अंडर फंडिंग होता है तो uh, आगे जाके बाकी चैप्टर्स में ऑल्सो यू विल सी दैट वी माइट सेल आर एंटायर स्कीम ऑफ टू सम इंश्योरेंस कंपनी और समथिंग तो उस टाइम पे देयर इज रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग सो दिस इज आल्सो लाइज देयर इन डिफाइंड बेनिफिट कि अगर अंडर फंडिंग हुआ तो हो सकता है यू माइट यू माइट नॉट लूज आउट ऑन योर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन कंप्लीटली बट यू माइट सी अ डिक्लाइन इन द लेवल ऑफ not contribution i mean benefit uh, you might see a decline in the level of benefit further if the benefit promise is changed legislation will usually prevent worsening of uh, benefits for past period changes can be made to future benefits vary from change to salary definition to the withdrawal of defined benefit promise these are theek hai then uh, individual for dc scheme individuals should consider what choices are available in relation to the investment funds and types of annuities or drawing benefits after retirement insufficient funds again same thing the um, the individuals will want to compare the projected benefits 
there is a risk that the level of benefits will be lower than expected investment return which is funding level ka point bol sakte hai how will an individual know ki kitna funding hai employer ka no so uh, individual does not have to know kitna funding hai employer ka but uh, definitely रिस्क है ये हम लोग बोल सकते हैं कि ये फैक्टर रहेगा तो इफ फॉर एग्जांपल द स्पॉन्सर इज समवन जिसका हम लोग को दिख रहा है दैट सॉल्वेंसी इज इन क्वेश्चन देन प्रॉब्लम वी विल नॉट वांट टू गो फॉर अ डिफाइंड बेनिफिट की दे विल नॉट नो कितना फंडिंग है बट दे विल डेफिनेटली हैव एन आईडिया अबाउट द एम्प्लॉयर और द स्पॉन्सर फाइनेंशियल पोजीशन एज सच एंड फंडिंग का ऐसा सिस्टम है कि दीज थिंग्स आई यूजली कैप्ट ट्रांसपेरेंट कोई भी ये सब पेंशन प्लान होता है या ग्रेचुटी होता है ये सब में आजकल बिकॉज ऑफ द रिपोर्टिंग स्टैंडर्ड एंड एवरीथिंग देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ ट्रांसपेरेंसी दे हैव टू कीप शोइंग दर हाउ मच फंड आर दी कीपिंग डिसाइड फॉर ऑल दिस एम्प्लॉय इफ द एम्प्लॉय वॉन्ट दे कैन ऑलवेज स्टडी दैट एंड चेक ओके इसलिए ये सब पॉइंट इंक्लूड कर सकते हैं uh level of benefits will also depend on level of annuity this will depend on time of retirement and choices made this one no one has spoken about ki annuity rate will be change aa sakte hai because there is nothing fixed uh in defined contribution apne contribute kar rahe wo to hum logo lump sum mein jab milega usko bhi if we want to convert into an annuity what annuity will be get is not confirmed That will depend on the prevailing annuity rate whenever we retire. So both BB and BC individuals also want to know details of any death and service benefits and ill health retirement arrangements. So uh, basically, any other clauses in the product. Individuals will need to know how much they are expected to contribute, if there is flexibility to increase or reduce contribution. Want to know how much the employer will contribute and whether this depends on their own contribution. In dependency, के बारे में I think someone spoke कि जो भी employee का contribution है, whether it has to match the employer's contribution or it is in some way depending on how much the employer contributes. Individual circumstances में number of years expected until retirement. number of years with that particular employer any dependents health status individuals other pension and financial arrangements how much they can afford to contribute capacity to bear risk and wish to have control over the investment individual level pe i think bahut kam points ye sab discuss hue we focus more on on an employer employee relation rather than as an individual also what factor That's the particular individual experience. But ठीक है more or less it was fine. Could be doubt, could be all point you want to add. Okay. Now, uh, since it's already nine twenty one, can you all do this question for homework? I will add it to the homework questions list. ये ऐसे भी एक general point generation वाला question था. it was not a very uh, content oriented question so this one you all can try and then just go through it from the past papers okay yeah, i will just add this question to the homework list and we can move on with today's topic okay yeah. can you share the questions for homework in this one because yesterday on the chat group uh, praveen said that this document will not be shared with us hello yes i was saying ki i was going to clarify this uh, when once we were going to start with the next ppt that uh, i have been told that we cannot share the entire presentation so today what you all can do is the important areas and focus areas i will say that you all can note down and the questions ka list hai that will be shared to you 
in an excel file i will we'll, we'll be sharing a spreadsheet uh, maybe a google sheet so usse what will happen is uh, i will keep updating it jaise jaise we have the session or else i will be sending uh, out individual excel sheet after every class usme i will ask the homework questions and the reference questions as well okay but the first part of the ppt jahan pe focus areas and all that wo wala aap log ko note down karna hoga and flow charts so you all already have i believe hard copy mein it's already been sent along with the uh, entire set of material so that you can see from there okay acha i will just change the presentation The next section we'll be doing is chapter eight to twelve on investment market. Okay, and now about this section. Um, this section again is honestly part of the base only. But in it, some some parts are which are very important because it is individually asked questions. Even though it talks about again a lot of products and everything, like the previous uh, section of the chapter. it talks about a lot of different products or different uh, ideas but it is pretty important especially some of the portions so bond and money markets equity and property markets other investment classes behavior of markets and valuation of investments isme if i tell you chapter wise which chapters are important i would say equity and property super important other investment classes super important valuation of investments i think ki bahut zyada book work involved hai so for ifoa i don't think valuation of investments pe bahut zyada focus hoga even if they do give they will probably either give a short note or they will uh, go for something very very application based jo ki valuation mein thoda mushkil hai matlab they will ask you to create uh, some sort of valuation method that that they can ask for i i i students valuation investments pe uh, you must be knowing i will say also ki har ek method ka three four lines to you must be knowing on every valuation method okay now coming to the first chapter bond and money market okay system p i hope all of you are aware of system p system p hum log ko jitna bhi products hai in this section every single product that you study make a system p table for each product i have attached an example over here you don't have to make it very complicated or very elaborate even this keywords ka uh, table will do so that you can just cover, convert it into sentences and maybe add one or two lines in some of the points if required so basically you have reasoning ki agar let's say marketability low hai to kyun low hai उसमें यू कैन एड वन टू लाइन ऑल राइट सिस्टम पी में आता क्या क्या है इट इज सिक्योरिटी सिक्योरिटी इज बेसिकली क्रेडिट रिस्क को देखते हैं कि हम लोग का इन्वेस्टमेंट कितना सिक्योर है ईल्ड है यू विल हैव टू फॉर कंपेयर इट विद और हैव अ बेंच मार्क सॉर्ट ऑफ अ थिंग बिकॉज ईल्ड इज वेरी सब्जेक्टिव देन देर इज स्प्रेड स्प्रेड इज बेसिकली वोलेटिलिटी कि कितना वोलेटिलिटी रहता है टर्म इज लॉन्ग टर्म शॉर्ट टर्म मीडियम टर्म जो भी है हाउ अर्ली और हाउ लिक्विड यू कैन से या फिर कितना टाइम पीरियड के लिए यू आर पुटिंग इन योर फंड और ब्लॉकिंग योर फंड ई इज फॉर एक्सपेंसिस जो एनी इन्वेस्टमेंट रिलेटेड एक्सपेंसिस एंड रिमेंबर इट इंक्लूड एंट्री एज वेल एज एग्जिट एक्सपेंसिस so don't just focus on entry expenses also talk about exit expenses and uh, for that matter even talk about maintenance expenses so for example property ke time mein expenses mein you can also include that there may be maintenance expenses uh, as well 
तो इसीलिए दैट इज ऑल्सो एन एडेड कॉस्ट टू द एंटायर इन्वेस्टमेंट पोर्टफोलियो देन एम इज फॉर मार्केटेबिलिटी ओके क्विकली मार्केटेबिलिटी लिक्विडिटी के बीच में डिफरेंस समवन marketability is how easily you have market available to sell a product how easily you can find someone who will buy your product and liquidity is how quickly you can convert your asset into cash right good theek hai so marketability mein you cannot talk about that uh, it is an illiquid asset that would be wrong if you use the word illiquid you will have to talk uh, about it in terms of finding a buyer okay how easy it is to find a buyer that is about marketability how big a market is there kitna uh, volume of activity hota hai market pe all of those things you will be writing inside marketability theek hai p is for tax tax again uh, you will have to see individual basis pe general point will always be tax depends on the uh tax system prevailing in the country ya fir you can write things like there may be tax benefits uh ya fir for some products then may not be some tax benefits for example conventional bonds mein you can always write that there may be uh tax benefits that is one aspect of tax second aspect of tax is uska jitna bhi types ka returns hai any cash flow <laughs> any cash flows arising from that particular investment usme aapka taxation uh, rules kya hote hai which means what kind of taxes are applicable so for example usually we talk about two income tax and capital gains tax kyunki investments pe ye do hi hote hai so aapko kaun sa tax zyada affect karega because in a particular tax regime the capital gains tax rate or the income tax rate whichever is higher or lower will always affect the kind of investment the uh, people in under that regime go through or people uh, investments that the people make theek hai so first wale mein system ki karna hoga money market instruments ka conventional bonds ka and index linked bonds ka okay i think shayad material mein index linked bonds ka alag se nahi diya hua hai so this one you will have to use your own logic and do it and ek aur jo question karna hai ek aur jo uh, topic karna hai from this chapter is attractiveness and unattractiveness of money market instruments attractiveness basically ki why would people want to invest in money market instruments ye main isme hai unattractiveness <coughs> is in the form of a question at the end of the chapter ओके तो मटेरियल के जो बैक क्वेश्चंस है उसमें अनअट्रैक्टिवनेस के ऊपर आल्सो यू विल फाइंड सॉलिड पॉइंट्स सो दैट यू शुड प्रिपेयर फॉर दिस चैप्टर ओके नेक्स्ट कमिंग टू इक्विटी एंड प्रॉपर्टी मार्केट अगेन इक्विटी एंड प्रॉपर्टी में सिस्टम भी तो करना ही होगा मेनली इक्विटी एंड प्रॉपर्टी ही है उसमें बहुत ज्यादा वैरायटी नहीं है तो ये दो का सिस्टम भी एंड प्रॉपर्टी में भी फ्री होल्ड लीज होल्ड के बीच में यू विल हैव टू सी कि क्या डिफरेंस हो रहा है प्रोज एंड कॉन्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्री ग्रुपिंग तो ग्रुपिंग इक्विटीज बाय सेक्टर बाय इंडस्ट्री इसका प्रोज एंड कॉन्स इसके ऊपर कभी कभी क्वेश्चंस आ जाते हैं सो दिस इज वन टॉपिक विच यू मस्ट पिक अप फ्रॉम द मटेरियल द मार्केटेबिलिटी ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी इसके ऊपर एक सेक्शन है एंड इट हैज अ लॉट ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट सो इफ इवन इफ यू कैन वेरी वेल गेट अ सॉलिड इंडिविजुअल क्वेश्चन on just marketability of property as an investment okay so usme bahut sara cheez aata hai it talks about a lot of factors that come into play kyunki property is a very subjective asset property as a whole ke bare mein bolna mushkil hota hai because property itne varieties ke hote hain there are so many factors about property that nearly every property is distinct from the other इसीलिए मार्केटेबिलिटी के ऊपर एक अच्छा क्वेश्चन बन सकता है कि क्या क्या फैक्टर्स हम लोग को कंसिडर करना होता है बाय जजिंग द मार्केटेबिलिटी ऑफ सम प्रॉपर्टी रनिंग यील्ड का कॉन्सेप्ट है रेंट के ऊपर दैट इज जस्ट अ टू लाइन कॉन्सेप्ट गुड टू नो बिकॉज दिस इज समथिंग जो हो सकता है स्किप हो जाए 
अगर एग्जाम में आए तो वी माइट नॉट रियलाइज की रनिंग व्हील क्या होते हैं स्ट्राइक नहीं करे तो जस्ट फॉर रिविजन पर्पज गो थ्रू द कॉन्सेप्ट इन डिरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट अगेन एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर बिकॉज इन डिरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी अपकमिंग थिंग वी हैव रियल एस्टेट इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट कमिंग अप वी हैव इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट भी है बट वो प्रॉपर्टी में नहीं आएगा एग्जैक्टली बट हाँ इन डिरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट जो हो रहा है क्योंकि प्रॉपर्टी इज आइडियली नॉट अ डिविजिबल एसेट तो डिविजिबिलिटी कम होने के कारण विच इज अगेन पार्ट ऑफ मार्केटेबिलिटी ऑल्सो अ रीजन वाई मार्केटेबिलिटी कैन बी लो फॉर अ प्रॉपर्टी इन डायरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट में बहुत सारा बेनिफिट मिल जाता है हम लोग को जो हम लोग को डायरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी से नहीं मिले बट एट द सेम टाइम देर आर कॉन्स ऑल्सो तो इन डायरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट में आई वुड से मेनली फोर थिंग्स करना है नहीं थ्री थिंग्स करना है फर्स्ट वुड बी वेज और एवेन्यूज फॉर इंडिरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट सेकेंड वुड बी द प्रोज एंड थर्ड वुड बी द कॉन्स ओके और इसके अलावा जनरलाइज यू कैन राइट अबाउट कॉस्ट एंड एवरी थिंग और द प्रोसेस ऑफ हाउ थिंग्स वर्क बट मेनली दीज थ्री आर द ब्रॉड हेडिंग की वॉट आर द एवेन्यूज वॉट आर द एडवांटेजेस एंड वॉट आर द डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफकोर्स एज कम्पेयर टू डिरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट इसके बारे में भी अलॉट ऑफ गुड कंटेंट इन द मटीरियल एंड ऑल्सो रिविजन नोट या फिर पास या पेपर तो इसीलिए यू कैन टेक अ पॉइंट फ्रॉम देर अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट क्लासेस अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट क्लासेस में समरी इज वेरी गुड फॉर दिस चैप्टर तो यू कैन यूज द समरी क्लोज वर्सेज ओपन एंडेड कलेक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट स्कीम ये जो डिफरेंस है ये वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट डिफरेंसेज है बिकॉज ये डिफरेंस करने से यू विल ऑल्सो कैच होल्ड ऑफ द फीचर्स ऑफ बोथ क्लोज एंड ओपन एंडेड एंड यू विल ऑल्सो गेट एन आंसर ऑन डिफरेंशिएशन बिटवीन द टू ठीक है डिस्काउंट टू एन ए वी अच्छा डिस्काउंट टू एन ए वी जो है ये प्रीवियस चैप्टर में भी है एक्सिटी एंड प्रॉपर्टी वाले में भी डिस्काउंट टू एन ए वी है कि नेट एसिड वैल्यू से हम लोग का डिस्काउंट पे प्राइसेस क्यों जाता है वॉट आर द रीजन वॉट आर द थिंग दैट आर इंक्लूडेड इन दैट मार्जिन ये सारा चीज दोनों चैप्टर से मिला के करना है ओके ओवरसीज मार्केट इमर्जिंग मार्केट ये दोनों एज टॉपिक वेरी अगेन अपकमिंग क्योंकि न्यू इन्वेस्टमेंट एवेन्यूज है नॉट एज कॉमन एज दी अदर्स तो ओवरसीज इमर्जिंग एंड इनडायरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्टमेंट में से आई थिंक एक तो उन लोग को उन लोग देंगे प्रॉबेबली इन दी एग्जाम बट इसमें यू डोंट हैव टू गो थ्रू दी इंटायर कंटेंट यू कैन डू इट फ्रॉम द समरी ऑल्सो बहुत अच्छे से समरी में दे हैव कवर्ड मेनी पॉइंट so mm-hmm. even if you do the summary properly or if you have the summary handy then it will help you a lot commercial mortgage is uh, again a very new thing so commercial because usually hum log residential mortgage dekhte hain commercial mortgage is thoda new so uska bhi concept karna would be good for you okay yeah. okay any doubts up till here pehle ha khushi bolo डिस्काउंट डिस्काउंट टू टू एनएवी 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 वाला कैन यू यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन ओके सो आई विल एक्सप्लेन द क्या सबसे पहले व्हाट इज एनएवी एसेट का जो नेट वैल्यू द नेट एसेट वैल्यू जो इफ यू आर टेकिंग अप अ मॉर्गेज या फिर जो प्रॉपर्टी पे सिक्योरिटी है उस सिक्योरिटी एसेट का जो नेट एसेट वैल्यू आई थिंक दैट नेट तो नेट एसेट वैल्यू इज नॉट फॉर प्रॉपर्टी एंड एवरीथिंग नेट एसेट वैल्यू फॉर एग्जांपल अगर अपने रियल लाइफ को बचते हैं तो म्यूचुअल फंड्स में हम लोग नेट एसेट वैल्यू देखते हैं कैसे देखते हैं म्यूचुअल फंड के पास बहुत सारे एसेट्स होते हैं हाँ हाउ डू म्यूचुअल फंड वर्क म्यूचुअल फंड में बहुत सारे एसेट्स होते हैं वट एवर मनी वी गिव दम दे एलोकेट यूनिट टू अस राइट दे एलोकेट यूनिट टू अस डिपेंडिंग ऑन वट एवर द प्रिवेलिंग रेट इज उतना यूनिट को उन लोग क्या करते हैं वॉट डू दोज यूनिट रेप्रेजेंट दूनिट 
are actually your part share in the mutual fund ka investment jo bhi fund house hai uska jo investment hai usme ek part share aapko mil raha hai that is what one unit uh, means तो उस वन यूनिट का या फिर सारे यूनिट का मिला के नेट एसेट वैल्यू क्या होगा दैट वुड बी द एसेट वैल्यू ऑफ द इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ द फंड राइट वो हो गया नेट एसेट वैल्यू तो आइडियली व्हाट शुड हैपन कि जो भी नेट एसेट वैल्यू है उसको डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल नंबर ऑफ यूनिट्स दैट द फंड हैज इशूड और एलोकेटेड उतना आपको मिलना चाहिए राइट right? उस रेट पे आपको मिलना चाहिए आपका इन्वेस्टमेंट बट हम लोग को उस रेट पे नहीं मिलते तो लेट से अगर थाउजेंड रुपीज का uh, हम लोग के पास एसेट बुक है एंड देर आर हंड्रेड यूनिट जब द कंपनी हैज इशूड और द फंड हाउस हैज इशूड तो थाउजेंड बाय हंड्रेड कितना टेन होना चाहिए एक एक यूनिट का वैल्यू टेन होना चाहिए राइट बट ये टेन नहीं होते Usually 10 के नीचे होते हैं वाई देर आर मेनी रीजन डिस्काउंट टू एनी का रीजन वॉज दैट वन वेरी ऑब्वियस रीजन इज एक्सपेंसिज एंड एवरी थिंग जो एसेट्स है फंड हाउस का नॉट ऑल दी एसेट्स आर गोइंग टू गो टू यू सम ऑफ इट इज केटरिंग टू दी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दी एक्सपेंसिज एंड एवरी थिंग एंड देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ डिमांड एंड सप्लाई ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व इन एक्सटिमेटिंग द मार्केट प्राइस तो ये सारे रीजन के कारण Usually discount to NAV मतलब जो NAV है उससे discount पे या उससे कम पे तो अगर टेन का एन ए वी चल रहा है तो हो सकता है जब आपको अगर आप आज न्यू यूनिट खरीदने जाओ तो आपको टेन पे नहीं आपको हो सकता है नाइन के रेट पे यूनिट एलोकेट हो ओके यू विल गेट वट एवर अमाउंट ऑफ मनी यू गिव इट विल बी डिवाइडेड बाई नाइन एंड नॉट टेन टू डिसाइड कि आपको अब न्यू यूनिट कितना मिलेगा समझ में क्या हुआ सो इफ द डिनोमिनेटर इज डिक्रीजिंग देन द फाइनल आंसर विल इंक्रीज राइट इफ द डिनोमिनेटर इज हाँ इफ यू डिवाइड बाई नाइन देन द फाइनल आंसर विल इंक्रीज सो यू विल नाउ बी आई ओके बेसिकली डिस्काउंट टू एनी ये सब यूनिट्स का कॉन्सेप्ट है जस्ट गॉड टू एक्सप्लेन एनएवी कहाँ से आते हैं बट डिस्काउंट टू एनएवी एस कि अगर मान लो आप कोई भी म्यूचुअल फंड उठाते हो या कोई भी फंड उठाते हो इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी दैट इज अ म्यूचुअल फंड एनी काइंड ऑफ फंड और एनी काइंड ऑफ सी आई एस यहाँ पे कलेक्टिवली लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर इन्वेस्टिंग एंड यू आर गेटिंग पार्ट शेयर इन इट इफ यू सी कि आपको uh, आपका एसेट वैल्यू कितना है फ्रॉम दैट यूनिट उतना वैल्यू अगर आप आज बेचने जाओगे ना अपने यूनिट को यू विल नॉट गेट दैट प्राइस फॉर योर यूनिट यू विल गेट अ लोअर प्राइस बिकॉज मार्केट में अगर आप मान लो मनी कंट्रोल पे या कहीं पे जाके देखते हो अपने उस पर्टिकुलर इफ इट्स लिस्टेड म्यूचुअल फंड और इफ इट्स लिस्टेड फंड देन यू विल सी दैट नेट एसेट वैल्यू ज्यादा है बट मार्केट में वैल्यू हो सकता है कि कम चल रहा हो एज कम्पेयर टू द नेट एसेट वैल्यू इट डज नॉट मीन दैट द फंड इज परफॉर्मिंग टूअर हो सकता है दैट हैज इंक्रीज ओवर टाइम क्योंकि क्या हो रहा है नेट एसेट वैल्यू भी इंक्रीज होते रहते हैं आज फंड जो जो एक्विटीज में डाल के रखे हैं मान लो वो एक्विटीज का वैल्यू अगर बढ़ रहा है तो फंड का नेट एसेट वैल्यू बढ़ रहा है तो फंड का जो मार्केट प्राइस है हो सकता है यूनिट का मार्केट प्राइस भी बढ़ रहा हो द ट्रेजेक्टरी माइट बी गुड बट देर माइट बी अ मार्जिन बिटवीन द नेट एसेट वैल्यू एंड दी मार्केट प्राइस तो क्लियर है और ये जो मार्जिन है इसको बोलते हैं डिस्काउंट टू एन एवी एंड इसी के बारे में रीजन एंड एवरीथिंग दिया हुआ है बहुत अच्छे से दोनों चैप्टर में मिला के क्लियर नाउ यस ओके थैंक्स ओके अच्छा एनी अदर डाउट एनी वन अभी तक कुछ भी जो नहीं समझ में आया हूं नेक्स्ट वी हैव बिहेवियर ऑफ द मार्केट बिहेवियर ऑफ द मार्केट में नॉट अ लॉट दैट हैज लीज होल वर्सेस प्योर ओके चलिए आई विल डू दैट इन सम टाइम ये दो चैप्टर खत्म करके फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग शॉर्ट टर्म इंटरेस्ट रेट इसके ऊपर मटीरियल में भी वर्ड कंटेंट है एंड देर हैव बीन क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो इन द पास्ट 
So thus, if you have to pick up factors that affect short-term interest rate and factors affecting property. Okay, fact or be बहुत सारे चीज के लिए factors हैं. For example, equity and everything. I am not marking those as important because I feel कि exam में equity and all से हम लोग comparatively we are more well acquainted with these products. And we can think more on lines of these because in real life, we are very different. In property, there are technicalities that come in. So, for this reason, property I have specifically mentioned short-term interest rates. Again, a lot of technical points. That's why I have mentioned. Apart from this, I would recommend that at least go to the summary of this chapter. In that, the key factors that are listed, they should be read once again because it is possible that even after being well acquainted, some points might slip. So, once again, the summary of this chapter you must go through. And lastly, short note on the theories. Liquidity preference market segmentation. ये सब के ऊपर एक short note आ सकता है, especially for IIA students, because uh, again they are shifting to a lot of short note concepts, uh, या short note pattern questions. So this one also uh, you must do. <coughs> short note on theories का um, a question I think दिया हुआ है. होमवर्क लिस्ट में दिया हुआ है उसमें शॉर्ट नोट ऑन द थ्योरी है तो वहां से आल्सो यू कैन डू दैट इज आल्सो गुड इनफ लास्टली वी हैव वैल्यूएशन ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट्स एज आई सेड उतना ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है इसमें आपको सिर्फ हर मेथड ऑफ वैल्यूएशन को समझना है यू शुड बी एबल टू राइट टू थ्री लाइंस ऑन एवरी मेथड एंड जस्ट वन मेथड जिसके ऊपर इंडिविजुअल अलग से क्वेश्चन आ सकता है आई वुड से इज मार्केट वैल्यू इसका क्या प्रोज एंड क्या कॉन्स होगा ऑफ यूजिंग मार्केट वैल्यू क्योंकि मार्केट वैल्यू यूज करने में बहुत सारा चीज एक्सटर्नली अफेक्ट करता है तो प्रोज एंड कॉन्स होते हैं वेरी सॉलिडली गिवन इन दर्कुलम सो दैट यू कैन पिक अप फ्रॉम द मटीरियल ओके तो दो ही क्वेश्चन दिए हैं मटीरियल के बैक क्वेश्चन से बिकॉज बाकी क्वेश्चन काफी डायरेक्ट टाइप की है चैप्टर में So 11.3 and 12.3 you can refer to, and this is the homework list. Either you can screenshot it right now, or anyway I will be sharing the uh, exercise with this list. Okay. Okay. Now let's. Uh, acha. Sabse pehle leasehold versus freehold. Shelly, what is your understanding of leasehold and freehold property? बोलो Leasehold is a situation where we receive rent on property. Okay, <clears throat> leasehold is where the property is held for infinite time. Okay, so it's me. Ah, आपको मतलब what what issue are you facing? Are you unsure whether this is correct or not? so rent related and ownership how they are different so basically leases jab hote jo lease hold property yahan pe hum log jisko compare kar rahe with freehold these talk about very long term leases jaise 99 year leases bhi hote hain okay so that is as good as uh, being the owner of the property if i tell you that i am giving you a property or i am renting you out a property for 99 years You will think that you are the owner of the property only, because you know that till you are there, 
that property is yours but actual mein aisa nahi hai actual mein you are paying a lease rent on it even though you have been so you mentally you think ki wo aapke but freehold mein there is no such concept you are the ultimate owner okay ab freehold mein bhi two types hote hain freehold mein either it is unencumbered or it is a uh, lease तो इसमें क्या होगा अन एनकम्बर्ड मतलब देर आर नो अदर कमिटमेंट और नो अदर ऑब्लिगेशन रिलेटेड टू द प्रॉपर्टी तो इधर यू हैव अ मॉडगेज ऑन दैट प्रॉपर्टी मॉडगेज होने से अन एनकम्बर्ड है मतलब कि किसी और का कोई राइट नहीं है उस प्रॉपर्टी पर अगर वो फ्री होल्ड प्रॉपर्टी को आप खुद लीज कर देते हो तो सामने वाले के लिए इट बिकम्स अ लीज होल्ड प्रॉपर्टी फॉर यू इट इज स्टिल अ फ्री होल्ड प्रॉपर्टी so as you said uh, rent related and ownership if you own a property it is freehold if you have rented a property for yourself then it is leasehold if you rent your property to someone so wo aapke liye kabhi bhi leasehold nahi hoga wo aapke liye phir bhi freehold hi hoga theek hai clear now okay any other doubt slide of chapter 11 and 12 i am noting them theek hai okay uh ye da 11 Okay, done. Anything else, anyone? Hello. Now let's look at the case studies for today. A large benefit uh, scheme invests in a wide range of assets. Current port- property portfolio held by the benefit scheme consists of direct investment in offices. I don't know why it's all in I N T J the N I O G A. Anyway, and warehouses, but not in residential property. So basically, there is a uh, primarily commercial property. Discuss how the scheme managers could gain exposure to residential property without making a direct investment. Scheme managers are proposing to direct invest directly invest in residential property. The proposal will involve buying the land, developing properties, and then renting them to private tenants. Explain why the scheme managers may wish to invest directly in residential property and discuss the risks involved with investing in this proposal. So basically, first part is talking about ways. of in the uh, ways of indirect investment second one is talking about basically the pros and cons and third one basically the pros of direct investment or cons of indirect investment and third one is talking about the cons of direct investment and also remember sirf hum log ko direct versus indirect pe nahi rukna hai yahan pe jo third part hai usme hum log ko is pure cheez ko individually bhi dekhna hai ki ye jo in log idea banaye hain इसमें क्या क्या रिस्क आ सकते हैं ओके सो लेट्स टेक अराउंड एट मिनट एट मिनट शुड बी गुड नाउ टेन ए एम लेट्स डिस्कस दिस क्वेश्चन
others can also put in their answer chat box <clears throat> गुड ओके सबसे पहला बात इनडायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट का वेज हम लोग को चाहिए तो सी आई एस परचेज ऑफ शेयर रेसिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी कंपनी डायरेक्ट और ओवरसीज लैंड टू प्रॉपर्टी मैनेजर ओके और सारा पार्ट ठीक है चलो सारा पार्ट साथ में देख लेते हैं As it relates to part wise, it's better. Scheme manager could invest in the residential property by an indirect investment shares in residential prop shares of the residential property. Residential property का shares नहीं होता है, Aishi. You can uh, write कि shares of <coughs> either the construction company जो उस property को बना रहा है, okay, or uh, the promoting company. एनी ऑफ दीज यू विल हैव टू राइट क्योंकि रेसिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी इन इट सेल्फ का कोई शेयर नहीं होता है या कोई लिस्ट मतलब शेयर इशू ही नहीं होता है कुछ इट कैन बी थ्रू यूनिट ट्रस्ट क्लोज एंडेड फंडिफरेंट रेसिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी टू हेल्प डाइवर्सिफाई द रिस्क ओके सी आई एस इन्वेस्टिंग इन कंपनी इज इन्वॉल्व इन रेसिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टी बिजनेस This is to invest directly in this. Okay, part two. Yeah. Read. Ho gaya. ETF. Ho gaya. Buying property firm shares. Buying bonds issued by residential property construction company. Okay. Collective investment scheme shares. Invest in company with deals with property. तो मोरलेस हमारे पास अराउंड थ्री टू फोर वेज आया लेट्स इन लोग क्या क्या वेज का बात किया ऑफकोर्स आई थिंक इतना ही इन्वेस्ट इन पूल प्रॉपर्टी फंड और सी आई एस ओपन और क्लोज एंडेड उससे हम लोग को डाइवर्सिफिकेशन भी मिलेगा बट देर विल बी लैक ऑफ कंट्रोल परचेज शेयर इन अ प्रॉपर्टी कंपनी ओके लेस कंट्रोल दैन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड शेयर प्राइस will also be affected by more general stock market movements lend to property developer and invest in a company offering equity release products okay uh, one more point yahan pe i had seen abhi uh, bonds bonds also you can go for okay part 2 dekhte hain why invest directly in property direct control avoid expenses like fund management fees benefit scheme is large it can achieve diversification by direct investments also um will provide a diversification away from current pool of assets prices in direct investment will be less volatile in short term prices in direct investment will be less uh, as a due to in frequent valuation of direct investment okay tax advantage of direct residential property okay liabilities match the cash flow on terms of currency nature feel good factor 
बेनिफिट स्कीम को क्या फील गुड होगा भाई प्रॉपर्टी ओन करके इंडिविजुअल के टर्म्स में यू कैन राइट फील गुड फैक्टर ओके डोंट राइट इट फॉर बेनिफिट स्कीम एंड ऑल बिकॉज इट्स नॉट सो आइडियल दैट दे शुड फील गुड अबाउट ओनिंग अ प्रॉपर्टी फील गुड फैक्टर डेफिनेटली इंडिविजुअल के केस में यू कैन डू even for close knit companies for that matter you can do that uh, they have a manufacturing facility if they are using it if they have a manufacturing facility to wahan pe ho sakta hai ki factor like they own the <coughs> facility this is there is peace of mind but otherwise uh, for a benefit scheme nahi tax savings uh, on investing directly the scheme manager may see higher returns by investing directly okay Which is to invest to have more control, avoid high charges, inflation, interest, and return from rents and property that take inflation into account. Okay, diversification, high demand leading to high rented or high rental earnings. Okay, um, that's the end. Yeah. In line with current philosophy, consistent with existing process of direct investment. gain full control of use such as renting leasing selling the property when they want uh, gain from property guys and rental yield for liability matching direct investment diversification scheme no management fee match the liability tax breaks uh, may achieve may have better marketability than other buildings may offer higher return than corporate building okay so god you are focused not just in um, not just on the direct indirect part you also focus on the differentiate differentiation between commercial and residential okay okay so dekhte hain log kya likhe hain uh control over investments avoid additional layer of management charge expert they may have the expertise required since they already invest directly in commercial property so some uh, utsa bhai ne mentioned about consistency so ho gaya large scheme so again achieve sufficient diversification directly all points done good match against inflation suitable to match real liabilities government grants favorable tax breaks diversification from commercial properties esg objectives uh, no one spoken about Uh, may offer higher returns on commercial properties regular cash flows to meet benefit outgo this point also is a very good point for a benefit scheme ki agar hum log um, residential property mein dalte hain matlab property in general mein bhi dalte hain so we have a regular stream of inflow a stream of income jisko we can use to pay the benefits may have better marketability than commercial property okay so this one was also pretty well answered लास्ट पार्ट देखते हैं पार्ट थ्री मे नॉट हैव स्पेशलिस्ट एक्सपीरियंस फॉर डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट इनडिविजिबिलिटी लैक ऑफ एक्सेस टू पूल फंड लीड्स टू लेस एक्सपोजर टू ओवरसीज प्रॉपर्टी लेस मार्केटेबल वैल्यूएशन विल बी ट्रिकी एंड सब्जेक्टिव एक्सपेंसिस विल बी हायर टैक्स एडवांटेजेस इन चेंज इन द फ्यूचर ओके the manager may get a desired property in the particular location or may get a property in the location where there is low demand of rental might be construction delay in developing the property such that it can be rented out aisha okay first of all a point i did not uh, get pura then why how does it fit here you mean that uh, रेंटल इनकम इवन दो Raw material is unavailable or have high prices. Yeah. 
uh, higher than expected costs in developing the property. Private tenants may not be willing the pro willing to buy the property due to high rent. Willing to buy me, willing to uh, rent out the property, right now. Because it's like the same sentence with a contradiction. Hai. There may be times when the property is unoccupied. Okay, yes, occupancy is. Land might be litigated. Legal complications good. Might not get permits to develop desired properties. High influence of government in district development face opposition. You can also talk about red tapeism over here. High costs involved, expected time to develop might increase, might not find tenants quickly, rental voids, okay, buying the land is a long process, might take years before return is generated, hmm. renting alone as an income generator may be risky as voids are common, uh, other surrounding areas may not develop as expected leading to less or no rent. Regulations may increase the net cost of construction, cost of infrastructure higher than expected. Maintenance costs might be very high. Depressed residential property market might decrease property values. Long term development costs greater, political issues, marketability, tax, concentration risk, volatility, indivisible, regulatory, and cultural changes, preference to buy property rather than to rent. This one will be made. Good. A few points we have done. Let's just quickly see. Look at your lithium. Long term project lacks marketability, tax changes, political risk, volatility, potential concentration. All done. Difficult to find suitable land. Example in right area, the acceptable price, lack of expertise. So make a poor choice of land. Expertise, ke mein, I don't think anyone has spoken. I think no one has spoken. Planning permission may take a long time or may be refused. Okay, development costs greater, takes longer, problems with constructors, leading to a poor build quality, quality maintenance. Also, one more thing no one has spoken about. Voids if properties are not attractive to tenants, or if alternative properties are more attractive, economic downturns, regulatory changes, cultural changes, costs of collecting rents and maintaining properties. Huh. Maintenance and admin charges, excess of rental properties in area, reducing achievable rent, basically excess supply. Okay. okay. Any doubt, anyone? Let's move on to the next one then. Space Tourism PLC has been developing a space travel program for members of the public. It will have large operational costs and fuel will be a high proportion of these costs. In recent years, the cost of fuel has increased and volatility of fuel prices also increased. To protect against these rising fuel prices and volatility, Space Tourism has bought fuel price futures. Explain why they have bought futures, discuss reasons why futures may not be fully effective in meeting Space Tourism's objectives and outline how the futures exchange could manage its risk exposure. So, yeah, right now, first two parts space tourism ka baat kare. Third one is talking about the futures exchange. It's 10 15. It's a pretty short question. Five minutes low, 10 20. Let's discuss this. Okay.
चलो फ्यूचर ऑफ बॉट टू फर्स्ट पार्ट था एक्सप्लेन बाय स्पेस टूरिज्म बॉट द फ्यूचर्स बॉट टू लॉक इन द प्राइस एंड प्रोवाइड स्टेबिलिटी माइट एक्सपेक्ट प्राइस टू गो अप प्राइस लोअर देन एक्सपेक्टेशन प्राइस माइट बी लोअर देन फ्यूचर्स बॉट फॉर्म ट्रांजैक्शन कॉस्ट अच्छा ये तो सेकंड पार्ट का है हां Any end of risk buying at even higher prices, entering into a futures contract in theory, right? By the right? amount of fuel which is lower than current market price, futures will help manage the financial risk. Other traditional risk managers may not have been available, hence what futures bank into a cost-effective, observable market price, and hence the plan or forecast budget. Yes, obligation to. ठीक है गुड एनफ पॉइंट शॉर्ट आंसर की थैट में ज्यादा कुछ पॉइंट हो भी नहीं सकते हैं लॉक इन सर्टन प्राइस ऑफ फ्यूल एंड प्रोटेक्ट इट सेल्फ Correctly anticipated its fuel consumption, then the futures will help stabilize costs and ticket prices and reduce the volatility. So, ठीक है. इसके अलावा और भी additional points you all had given which were completely valid. So you all can add those points if you want. Second part discuss reasons why futures may not be fully effective. Futures might not be fully effective. Price might be lower than the futures bought for. Transaction costs might be high. Not all costs are covered by futures. They may not have enough funds to buy large future contracts now. Out of that risk, okay. Risk of fuel prices decreasing. High volatility. Company will have to buy at high price even if market prices are lower. High margins are required for futures trading, and company might not have that much funds available. So, then, ये वाला part करके I'm just coming to you. Or uh, might not have that much fund available. Counterparty default might mean that just need fuel at short notice. So we we'll have to buy current rates. Yes, demand can look uh, miscalculation. Costs will be high. May not be available for long duration and required volume. It has knowledge of the future, leading to hiring experts. ओके इसमें डिफॉल्ट और फिर जैसे हम इसके में एप्लीकेशन टाइप में रिपोर्ट करो हाँ तो बोलो फ्यूचर तो अपना एक्सचेंज रेट होता है ना स्टैंडर्डाइज होता है तो उसमें आप काउंटर पार्टीज कैसे बोल सकते हो क्या चीज़ फ्यूचर्स फ्यूचर तो एक्सचेंज में ट्रेड होता है एंड लाइक स्टैंडर्डाइज भी होता है तो इसमें काउंटर पार्टीज कहां से आ जाएगा लाइक वो पॉइंट वैलिड है यहां पे फॉरवर्ड होता तो मैं देख सकता था काउंटर पार्टी काउंटर पार्टी दिस योर राइट लो रहेगा डेफिनेटली लो रहेगा काउंटर पार्टी दिस करेक्ट मेरे इट्स लाइक अ वेरी नेगलिजिबल चांस कि काउंटर पार्टी दिस और रहे इन अ फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट गुड ऑब्जर्वेशन ओके तो देखते हैं In fact, uh, this only I was going to say. He none of you mentioned about the standardization. And if it strike, may be clear. The third part, they can understand. The third part, me, they have spoken about a futures exchange, which means the exchange traded it. So standardized uh, contracts. So, because current quantity and all, we cannot alter. Also, not just the quantity, even any specifications in the fuel, because it's स्पेस टूरिज्म तो हो सकता है कि फ्यूल में हम लोग को कुछ कुछ uh, कुछ भी हो सकता है कस्टमाइजेशन और एनी स्पेशल रिक्वायरमेंट्स विद रिगार्ड टू द फ्यूल माइट बी देयर 
उसके लिए हो सकते हैं स्टैंडर्डाइज कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अवेलेबल नहीं है हम लोग के पास सो वी माइट हैव टू गो फॉर स्लाइटली डिफरेंट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जिसके कारण बेसिस रिस्क आ सकते हैं क्रॉस हेजिंग रिस्क आ सकते हैं ठीक है देखते हैं हम लोग क्या लिखे रिस्क दैट रिस्क दैट फ्यूल प्राइसेस फॉल ये वाला हो गया माइट एक्सपेक्ट इफ फ्यूल प्राइसेस फॉल कस्टमर्स माइट एक्सपेक्ट टिकट प्राइसेस टू फॉल एंड कंपेटिटर हु हैव नॉट यूज्ड फ्यूचर्स विल देन हैव एन एडवांटेज दिस इज आल्सो अ वेरी गुड पॉइंट इन्वेस्टिंग इन फ्यूचर्स रिक्वायर्स एक्सपर्टीज दिस समवन मेंशन इट इज लाइकली दैट स्पेस टूरिज्म विल रिक्वायर अ वेरी पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ फ्यूल नॉट कवर्ड बाय द फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट लीडिंग टू बेसिस रिस्क एज इट इज मेंशन a uh, long term venture hai but futures contract will have only a certain term i think someone spoke about term also small risk that the counter party to the future ha ah. again i'll do neg- negligible yoga kyunki exchange hai uh pays to deliver on its obligation contract may be priced in a different currency to that in which space tourism price ticket prices ticket will need to focus how much fuel is uh, likely to need underestimate hone se volatility hoga overestimate hone se underestimation ka someone spoke about overestimation no one spoke about ki it will be holding futures unnecessarily last part outline how futures exchange could manage its रिस्क एक्सपोजर तो ना फ्यूचर्स एक्सचेंज पे आते हैं एक्सचेंज विल प्रोवाइड बैकअप टू काउंटर पार्टी रिस्क आई थिंक यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द क्वेश्चन रॉन्ग they are talking about futures exchange to hai exchange as a different entity managing its risk it is not uh, the question is not asking us ki futures exchange ke aane se how will the risk exposure change okay that's why while reading also i had mentioned ki first two is from space tourism ka point of view and the third part is from the exchange ka point of view Okay, so the point you have written is if the exchange comes in, then how will the risk exposure be better? The risk exposure can be managed by diversification across different sectors and classes of business. Okay. Rating in different asset classes and different geographies. Okay, so basically two points are solid. One is the different sectors, the different asset classes, and different geographies. Anyone else? Any other point? The futures exchange. How can we manage our risk? Actually, I think this one question is a little bit more better. Once we maintain the margins, then we are right. Once we do the risk booklet, because this question I think uh, has more of a general idea to it. The points you have written are hundred percent valid and solidly. Yeah, lick can be considered dealing in other securities. Okay, ha. So other securities, other asset classes. One thing about it. Yeah. So, uh, but it's me basically. I think they will be wanting a framework sort of a thing. Let's see. You know. डाल के कोई और पॉइंट है किसी के पास ओके दी एक्सचेंज शुड इंप्लीमेंट अ सूटेबल रिस्क मैनेजमेंट प्रोग्राम इन्वॉल्विंग एन इफेक्टिव आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ रिस्क एंड डिटरमाइनिंग अप्रोप्रिएट रिस्क मिटिगेशन स्ट्रेटजीज विद द एम ऑफ प्रोटेक्टिंग द एक्सचेंज अगेंस्ट एडवर्स सिनेरियोस रिस्क आइडेंटिफिकेशन में की रिस्क इज फेलियर ऑफ अ काउंटर पार्टी Failing to meet its obligations under the contract, the price of uh, fuel prices fall. Risk mitigation will be counter parties should be vetted before being allowed to trade on the exchange, including carrying out due diligence. Counter parties will be required to post collateral. Counter parties who do not meet their obligations may be fined or excluded from trading. 
limits can be placed on exposure to any one counterparty and exposure to each type of future this one thing counterparty risk jo futures mein hota hai ye exchange hone ke karan parties to the future ka to hat jate hain but kyun hatte because the exchange is basically bearing the counterparty risk on their behalf so exchange ke liye counterparty risk is a big thing okay this one we skip ye hum logo ko dekhna hoga and lastly monitoring of risk may it will have to monitor its position and take appropriate action as and when necessary okay koi bhi doubt question mein anything someone or anyone wants to add okay last question for today i think aske baad aap log ka sankhya sir ke sath class hai right which chapter have you reached फीचर्स employees will be able to contribute up to 10% of annual income into a personal account and company will also pay 10% account will increase in line with inflation each year monies can be withdrawn from this account in respect of a limited number of events set out in a predefined list company guarantees that the scheme will have enough cash to pay the benefit directors of the company have decided to invest the assets of the scheme in index linked securities However, an investment manager uh, has suggested that the scheme could be invested in a much wider range of investments in order to improve investment performance. Discuss the suitability of other investment classes for the scheme's assets. So, so just for us, now currently already indexing securities are main. Is that employee employer both are ten percent giving their annual income. Income. Inflation is a very key point in the question because account is uh, going to increase with inflation. Money can be withdrawn from this account in respect of a limited number of events. This is also a key point. You already predefined that what kind of events will withdraw will be, and company has guaranteed that enough cash will be, which means naturally we will expect that that it will be enough cash to be the amount that we are saying. So, what are the other investment classes? जो सूट कर सकते हैं एंड दे हैव आस्ट फॉर सूटेबिलिटी ऑफ अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट क्लासेस सो इट डज नॉट मीन यू ओनली हैव टू टॉक अबाउट एसेट्स जो कि सूट करेगा यू आल्सो हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द एसेट्स व्हिच विल नॉट सूट एंड व्हाई ओके सो यू बेसिकली हैव टू गिव सम वर्ड ऑफ एन इन्वेस्टमेंट स्ट्रेटजी एनालिसिस फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंपनी का स्कीम ओके 10:40 पे लेट्स डिस्कस दिस क्विकली एंड रैप अप ओके एक्चुअली आई थिंक 40 तक का भी वेट करने का दरकार नहीं है 4-5 मिनट्स गुड इनफ 4-5 मिनट्स ले लो
fixed interest bonds could match by nature of liabilities due to the fixed payment to be the arch of the case low risk hence suitable for safeguarding monetary value okay uh yahan pe inflation ke bare mein nahi bola hai overseas bond with manufacturing has overseas operations then got match by currency equities to provide real return in line with inflation i would say uh, sara bonds ko ek sath group karke you can just say ki in sab mein inflation nahi cover ho payega but is a case of uska benefits ho sakte hain cis to provide diversification equity mein bhi risk factor dena hoga cis to provide diversification away from other asset classes also loosely inflation protection not suitable mein corporate bonds hai direct property hai uh poor marketability liquidity and indivisibility okay ठीक है पर डायरेक्ट प्रॉपर्टी का इन्फ्लेशन बहुत अच्छा होता है एंड दिस थिंग प्री डिफाइंड लिस्ट है तो मे बी मार्केटेबिलिटी इतना ज्यादा इशू नहीं हो सकता है तो ऐसे किसी को भी नॉट सूटेबल या किसी को भी एकदम सूटेबल मतलब को गिव अ वेरी डिप्लोमेटिक व्यू ऑन ऑल Investing in all assets in one type of security includes concentration risk. It should be invested in wider range. Uh, in liquids, liquidity, inflation adjusted returns, secure and liquid but no protection. Equities less secure, more volatile. Inflation hota hai the direct appropriate if the class equities is then means exposure. Okay. Equity wise, that's how it is. Equities from national government bonds, overseas assets. Okay. Any other points, anyone? Okay. So uh, let's see. Acha. Whenever uh, investment ke upar aate hai, aapko ekdam starting se shuru hona hai ka. Okay. Money market instruments ke baare mein, jaise I see, no one has spoken about the money market instruments. So money market ke baare mein bhi thoda sa likhna hai. the uh, they have started with cash on deposit cash on deposit may positive return hai but inflation ke sath no won't keep on pace um like to be useful for liquidity particularly if there is instant access more flexibility money market may short term instruments with similar features as cash on deposit the same thing hai basically fixed interest securities uh, appropriate term ke liye hoga inflation return nahi hoga डिफॉल्ट रिस्क स्पेशली फॉर कॉपोरेट बॉन्ड आर एट सेट सब बॉन्ड्स को एक साथ ग्रुप कर दो तो क्योंकि मोर और लेस सिमिलर फैक्टर्स होगा यूजली सीरीज ऑफ फिक्स रेगुलर कूपन पेमेंट रिडेम्शन इज इंक्लूडेड एट पार ऑन स्पेसिफाइड रिडेम्शन डे दिस वन इज नॉट सो इंपॉर्टेंट पर हां रेगुलर कूपन पेमेंट्स के लिए यू कैन से कि वी डू नॉट नीड अ वेरी रेगुलर इनफ्लो बिकॉज़ काफी प्री डिफाइंड रिस्क है तो रेगुलर इनफ्लो इज नॉट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस ordinary shares uh, shareholders are entitled to a share in company's profits profit distributed as dividends company profits expected to increase over time uh, to see here inflation bhi hoga equities may be suitable for matching long term inflation but are volatile and so are unlikely to be a good match for short term inflation property inflation protection dega but expensive to manage diversification dega less marketable and indivisible overseas assets again uh, you spoken about higher returns uh, lekin koi bhi currency risk nahi mention kiya overseas assets ke sath diversification and expertise cis group faces diversification overseas equity and property investments as well as investment in domestic equities and property run by professional managers with expertise and uh, pay through investment charges ठीक है दिस आल्सो मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव कवर्ड डेरिवेटिव्स कुड बी यूज्ड एज यूज्ड टू हेज अगेंस्ट इन्फ्लेशन रिस्क और टू हेज अगेंस्ट मूवमेंट वन मोर थिंग जो कहीं पे यूज नहीं हुआ डेरिवेटिव्स ई डेरिवेटिव्स आर भी एक इन्वेस्टमेंट क्लास है एंड इवन दो डेरिवेटिव्स यूजुअली अलाउड नहीं रहते हैं बट फॉर हेजिंग एटसेट्रा 
derivatives are allowed. Okay. So I can see uh, Sanjeeti sir has also joined. So let's keep it till here today from my end. Thank you so much, all of you.